Hey guys, I'm back, and this is how I'm making another keyboard. This is going to be a part one of maybe a two-part series. At least I'm hoping it's going to be two parts. But I am uh, taking the Dactyl uh, keyboard, and I'm modifying it so that I can put ALP switches in it. And I modified the design quite a bit in Blender. Here is what I came up with. So getting to the stage, I went through quite a few prototypes, and a lot of them failed for various different reasons. So my first design, I stopped it probably about 10% of the way through. So in this piece, I have these little tiny feet, and these little feet I just didn't like. In my second iteration, I made the right hand piece first, and I had this little USB cutout here that was going to be fit perfectly for the breakout board for USB-C that I had. But that turned out not to work out. Um, however, uh, the top part with all the keys and the spacing was wrong as well. But I didn't realize that in this version. I waited until I printed off even another piece. And I noticed that whenever I pressed them, they actually would get stuck on each other. So they got stuck on each other, which means this whole print and the previous print before it was useless. I should have done prototyping at the very beginning for key spacing, but I wasn't thinking about it. I was only thinking about the cutout hole for the actual switch themselves. So then I printed off uh, two little pieces for testing out the spacing on all the keys. To fix the key spacing issue, I made a prototype model and I put the switches into that and looked at all the spacing in between all the keys. And the first version, while they didn't hang on each other, which was a great improvement, they weren't evenly spaced. Uh, the reason being is that Alps keys sit a little bit higher than uh, Cherry keys. So I didn't take that into account. And so in my second version, all of them are all evenly spaced and it looks perfect. And for my final prototype of key spacing, I went ahead and made a uh, piece that not only does the, the column, but it has a row next to each other so that we can ch check the other spacing that was there. And with all that done, we have the final piece, which I have printed off both of them, but I've only put in switches into one half so far. Uh, so the switches are in, and I made sure that all the places that would hit a corner were tested with switches uh, with cap keycaps rather and I'm really happy with the way this print turned out the second half of the key uh, keyboard I have not finished I still even have some pieces to tear out from the support material um, and it were the places where the USB stuff uh, goes into I'll be using USB-C to connect the two halves because it has reversible 12 pens which is really nice and I and make it even better I don't have to use a microchip between them uh, to process all the input from one half so I can fit it into four wires with the TRRS cable would do and push it over to the other one introducing input lag yeah I know the input lag is kind of a myth because the time that it takes to get to your computer is less than the time that it takes to send between halves so you really don't have any input lag but people still complain about it. I still like the fact that I'm just using wires straight across I can connect the columns up and everything I don't have to deal with another chip it just makes things a little bit simpler on my end. So the USB-C connector is made up of three parts you have one part of it which is the bottom and then you put the USB-C breakout board on top of that. And then finally you have the top of the full connector piece. And it leaves the, the pens exposed, uh, the solder points exposed, so I can actually connect up the wires. Um, and then lastly, it will slide into the keyboard slot. And this design works for the USB-C and it works for the, USB, uh, the mini USB which I'm using to connect to the actual computer. So like the USB-C connector, it's made up of three parts. You have the bottom, then you have the breakout board, but this time I'm using mini uh, B USB for the keyboard connector. And then I'm using the top part here, uh, just like the other one. And this will break, uh, break out the USB from the Pro Micro that I'll be using. Uh, the Pro Micro has just enough pens to uh, make sure all these keys will work in this keyboard 
and it's only like three dollars on Amazon, as opposed to the Teensy, which is I think the last time I bought one was like thirteen or fifteen dollars somewhere around there. So you save a little bit of money. So why is this part one of part two and not just a complete full thing? Well, the first reason is my keycaps aren't going to be here till December 12th and or somewhere around there because I don't know when Mass Drop's actually going to get them to me. That's I think that's when they actually get shipped to Mass Drop themselves. I ordered the Light Cycle DSA keycaps for Alps and this was for the minivan set. So it wasn't a complete coverage of this keyboard. And I planned on actually getting some keycaps from Pimp My Keyboard for Alps Black DSA, which I got those already a long time ago. But the light cycle has not come in yet, so whenever that's done, the keyboard can actually be finished. I also have a whole bunch of more projects coming down the pipeline, but none of them are finished as well, so that's another reason. And lastly, it's been the holidays here in the United States. We had Thanksgiving. And then we have those fake corporate holidays, you know, like Black Friday and Cyber Monday and, you know, who cares about whatever sale having. But those are holidays, supposedly. So to complete up the Dactylus keyboard in part two, I will have to hardwire all the switches together. And then I'll have to be able to program the Pro Micro, which I've never used before, but I hear it's just like a TNC, just a little bit harder. Uh, so I'll be using that. And then I have to get my keycaps, which I already talked about, and that'll be it. And the dactyls will be complete. Well, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see part two, then hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified whenever that pops up. Otherwise, stick around and watch the time lapse.